my name is Maeve McCormack and I'm coming to you from Sligo Library on behalf of Europe Direct. Today I'm talking to Dr Michael Barrett from ATU Sligo about the insurance apprenticeship. Michael's going to be telling us about what opportunities are available, particularly under the earn and learn model. Michael, you're very welcome. Thanks very much, Maeve. Thank you. Can you start by telling us a bit about who I to ATU Sligo is affiliated with in the context of the insurance apprenticeship throughout the country? Okay, well, the insurance apprenticeships are industry-led. That's the setup of the new apprenticeships. And the industry partners on this program are the Insurance Institute of Ireland and the LIA, the Life Insurance Association. Okay, and who is the insurance apprenticeship for? What type of people apply for it? Um, when I look at the cohort of students, you know, when I'm looking at the, the first year, 60, 70 students in the class, you know, you get a, a, a huge range of people, like a real cross-section of, of life. So you, you have school leavers, you know, 18, 19 years, all the way up to, you know, we have a number of apprentices in their 50s, so it's never too late. Um, that cohort, when you look at them, would be approximately 50-50 male, female, and from a, a range of backgrounds and academic histories as well. So a good cross-section of people and opportunities by the sounds of things. Absolutely, a, a, yeah. a complete, you know, um, map or mirror of society in general, you know, ages, previous experiences and that. So we're really proud of that, that we've really enabled access and open, opened up the prospect of an honours degree to so many people, hundreds of people at this stage. And talking about experience, what sort of qualifications or experience does somebody need if they want to get themselves an insurance apprenticeship? Okay, because it's an honours degree, there are certain minimum, minimum qualifications laid down. Uh, what I'll do is I'll refer you to the Earn and Learn website, www.earnandlearn.ie, for the specific details, because it's a very technical area. But broadly, um, candidates under 23 on the 1st of January of the year they apply need a uh, leave insert with, with two honours. Or um, we can look at prior learning. So maybe if you had, didn't make the two honours and you had maybe spent some time in college on a different course or whatever, we can take all that into account as well. Um, once you're over 23, um, it's really the employer would assess you for uh, entrance to the course and your likelihood of success. So um, the formal qualifications are less of an issue as you get older, which is um, the way it is for any college level eight degree anyway. Okay, and this course is delivered online, so it really, I suppose, increases the learning opportunities for people that although it's run from ATU Sligo, you don't need to be based in Sligo to become an apprentice. Um, absolutely not, although over the years we'd always have a, a number of apprentices from Sligo, I think every cohort we would have had three, four, five apprentices from Sligo, but we would have, have apprentices at this stage from every county in Ireland, um, you know, from the northern part of Donegal, uh, up, up um, Bannett, Moncrana, all the way down to West Cork and everywhere in between. So we're really proud that we've managed to make the apprenticeship available, you know, all over Ireland. And how is it structured? Can you talk us through maybe how somebody gets an insurance company, I suppose, to sponsor their apprenticeship and then when they do do this, how they manage their study and their work? Okay, so it's very much like getting any job. You would uh, either apply for an open position, um, and these are advertised on earnandlearn.ie, or you could approach um, you know, either an insurance broker or an insurance company and see what sort of uh, oppor open opportunities they may have. We, we would have had cases in the past where um, a company wouldn't really have uh, thought about taking on an apprentice. A very good candidate would have presented to them and would have joined the programme and recruited the candidate. So, I, you know, you could be creative. You could look at just not look at uh, open opportunities, but look at other opportunities that are available other companies as well. So then when you get the apprenticeship, you are working a certain number of days a week and then you're studying. OK, so the salary is the entry level salary for, you know, in, in that company. Um, and that will vary, um, you know, from different parts of the country. Obviously, you know, candidates in Dublin might get more of a premium than, say, some of the more rural areas with costs and that. So, um, yeah, you, you join the company. Um, the, you're working four days a week for the company. And then one day a week, um, you're studying online. And one of, those week, one of those days a week, every semester, maybe two of those days a week, is in Dublin or Sligo. So you get the chance to meet other apprentices face to face. So um, we find this is great. So you've bonded online with people, you've, you've met them virtually, and then you get the chance to meet them in, in face to face for the first time 
um, generally around October, and that's always a very exciting away day. And at the end of the three years, what are the qualifications and career prospects for those who complete the apprenticeship? Okay, so the qualifications, there's two embedded industry qualifications, uh, depending whether you take the general insurance stream or the life insurance stream. I'll talk about the general insurance stream just as an example. So um, in the first year, you get the, the minimum competency to, to operate in the industry, the APA. And then after the second year, you get the certified insurance, insurance practitioner, the, the second uh, industry qualification. And in your third year, uh, you get the BA honours in insurance practice from the ATU. So um, if you make normal progress through the course, you should have, an op you should have a graduation every year. So, yeah, that, 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 the industry qualifications are a real um, selling point of the programme. Um, they meet central bank requirements, so um, it, 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 it's very much a very robust qualification as well. The sorts of jobs people go into, or the apprentice goes into when they graduate, generally fall into technical areas in insurance, so they might progress technically within their company, or they might uh, progress into a supervisory or management role. And in the third year of the company, or sorry, the third year of the apprenticeship, the apprentice gets to do um, a capstone project where they really combine all the learning of the programme and it lets you explore um, either a technical area of the apprenticeship or indeed maybe your supervisory management style and, and how, how you might um, approach that as well. So by the end of the programme, um, not only will you have you know, had a very good uh, qualification, you'll also have a good idea of the different career opportunities. And because you're mentored by an employee or by a manager as part of the company, and hopefully that position will rotate, you should be introduced, in, particularly in the bigger companies, to a lot of the hiring managers uh, by the time you leave the company. So um, really, you know, if you, if you approach the apprenticeship properly, you have a chance to shine and to make your value known to the company. Okay, so excellent career prospects by Absolutely. the things. Final question, Michael, if people want to find out more information, where do they go? Okay, so I'll point you to, to do websites. Earnandlearn.ie is the insurance industry, industry specific site on apprenticeship. And then apprenticeship.ie has information on all apprenticeships and there'll be a section there on the insurance apprenticeship as well. Wonderful, Dr. Michael Barrett from ATU Sligo. Thanks very much, Michael. Thank you, Maeve. Thanks. Thanks very much for joining us. All the information that Michael has told us about is available at the end of this interview. My name is Maeve McCormack. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.